Joining me from the city is Talk TV correspondent Oliver Whitfield Mircic. Hello, Ollie. I hear there's a, a distinct atmosphere, I would say, of discontent and possible danger in Ely today. Yes. Yeah, that's right, Vanessa. There's still quite a tense uh, feeling in this neighbourhood. This is a part of Cardiff that has had historically bad relations with the police. At the moment, most of the debris from yesterday's riot has now all been cleared away, but there are still some signs of what happened here last night. It all started around 6pm when reports of those two boys having been killed filtered through to the local community. It then seems that some parts of social media try to say that the police were involved. South Wales police say that is not the case. But that anger then spilled over. And when police came here, they say after that accident, they were then hurled with bricks, with paint, with missiles and fireworks. It injured some officers. Some people have been arrested. You can see here the type of damage that we're talking about. This BMW vehicle all down the side has been splattered with paint. Part of its windscreen has been smashed. Over here is a local taxi which belongs to one of the residents. It looks semi-fine from here, apart from a few grazers. It's not until you get to the back that you see that the back windscreen has been kicked in or bricked in. The same for another vehicle that is down here. Now, the authorities are concerned that there could be a repeat of this type of violence this evening, and so they are calling for calm. It's the same in the Welsh Senate. Look, government here is urging people not to take to the streets tonight. They want to make sure that there is no repeat of the events of last night. But the atmosphere is still tense. Locals here are a very tight-knit community. They're very warm when you speak to them on their doorsteps. But they are, I'd say, a little bit frightened to come on camera because they're scared in case there is any sort of repercussions. And certainly the residents who live on this street say they don't believe that is anybody from their local community who's come here and started this trouble. They believe that when it was put out on social media that people from other parts of Cardiff, troublemakers from different neighbourhoods, have then descended and have then had these rolling battles with the police. But it's certainly, I'd say, one of the worst bouts of unrest that we've seen in Britain for quite some time. Ollie, today when you've been knocking on doors and trying to speak to local people and trying to ascertain exactly what's gone on and why and also whether there is a likelihood it will all kick off again tonight or whether it won't, when you ask people why it happened, what do they say? Do they seem to know? Well, it seems to be two different trains of thought. Some people say it is all the police's fault, that this has been a historically uh, an area that has suffered with deprivation. It's one of the highest deprivated areas in Wales. The relations with the police have been at an all-time low, according to some people that we've spoken to, and they say, you know, it's sort of been like a tinderbox situation where tensions have just risen and risen and risen over the past few years, and this has been that sort of lighting of the fuse which then caused the explosion. Other people say it is because of the socio-economic situation that we have in this part of Cardiff. So it's very, very difficult. There's then people who say that it's bored youths, uh, young people, it is troublemakers. Uh, it, this has been the scene of riots before, back in 1991, the so-called bread riots. And speaking to local members of the community leadership, they say that they are devastated by what has happened here because for decades after those riots, this area had to live with the stigma, with the labels that became associated with those riots. And local council, as they say, have been trying their very best to try to make this a better neighbourhood. Now they fear that the events over the past 24 hours will only move that back to what we saw almost 30 years ago. So, Ollie, what kind of steps are being taken by the police to stop tonight being a repeat of last night? Because, as you say, quite a lot of the debris has been cleared up, but we can see scenes of actual devastation there. There are burnt-out cars. I mean, it looks like a properly uh, violent and thoroughly engaged upon riot, doesn't it? So, so, so what's happening now to try and batten down the hatches before tonight? Well, I have to say, there is a surprising lack of a police presence here. Like, where we are at the moment, bear in mind, I'm just going to get the cameraman to pan down the rest of the road. You would imagine where the scene of a riot had been, you might have more police 
on show. There might be a few police vehicles to act as a deterrent, especially when we've got scenes like this where cars have just had their windows completely smashed in. I have seen police officers walking door to door. They are carrying out inquiries. They're trying to gather CCTV so that they can make more arrests and build up that intelligence picture. And the police say that they will be holding a press conference at some point later this afternoon. So everybody's attention will be on what the police have got to say there. At the moment, this community, or I should say part of this community, do not believe that police narrative, that the police were somehow not involved or that the police did not inflame situations. The police are trying to stick to that message that they had no involvement with this tragic accident that happened. But this is a community that is currently divided on its approach, on what has happened here. Mm -hmm. And it's also a community that is nervous for what could happen this evening. We have Jane Hutt from Welsh Labour addressing the Seneth on this subject, Oliver. So if you watch and I watch, then we can talk about it when we hear what she's had to say. And I, I was shocked and saddened, as I'm, I'm sure we all are today, to hear of the tragic death of two young people involved in a serious road traffic collision in the Ely area of Cardiff yesterday evening. And our thoughts are with the family and friends of the two young people involved. But I, I, I would like to take the opportunity, uh, along the points that you've made, about thanking all those services and indeed the community itself, all those services involved, health, police, the local authority, fire and rescue services, for the exemplary way they pulled together. That's quite an interesting way of discussing it, you might say, without discussing it. She's thanking everybody for their good service. Obviously, she's quite rightly is, is expressing her condolences to the families of the two teenagers who've lost their lives in this scooter crash. But she's not saying it was a riot, it was appalling, lawlessness was winning the day, oh my goodness, don't do it again tonight. She's almost acting as if... This is a euphemistically utopian society in which these sorts of things don't and cannot happen. That's rather odd, isn't it? Well, I think that's the fear, is that if they address it with stronger language, that could then inflame tension. So all of the attempts by the authorities, by local politicians, by uh, elected leaders here, is to try to calm that, to make sure that their language is not inflammatory, so that they try to avoid this worse of behaviour that we have seen over here within that past 24 hours. It's statements like that that have also been echoed by the Prime Minister's spokesperson today in the lobby briefing saying that what we saw here was totally wrong. It's similar sort of statements that we've seen from the Welsh First Minister, Mark Drakeford. So the political side of things here are definitely keen that this does not flare up again. I've, I've got to say, though, that the, the feeling here on, on the streets that people are still worried about the potential for what could happen. I mean, I believe that, that some of the press, and obviously the press and the media, have descended in some numbers upon Ely. Uh, and I believe that some of the press and the media have been met with actual hostility from local residents. Is that true? Yes, so that's, there's, a, uh, there's a lamppost that is not that far away. It's a street away from where we are at the moment. That has been adorned with helium balloons. It has got floral tributes to the two victims who have lost their lives. And around there, there's probably around a few dozen local residents who are gathering. They are keen that that area is not photographed, not videoed by the press. We have heard reports of one journalist who was nearby there. He had his bag stolen, apparently then had to uh, pay some money to get that bag back from some of the people who were around here. It's always a very difficult story to cover when you are a journalist, something like this, which has clearly upset the local community because there is such public uh, thirst for information about what has happened here. It's certainly something in the public interest when we see this happening within Great Britain, and yet you do have to balance that with the sensitivities of reporting on a community that has lost two of its young members. I mean, look, it's, it's going to be very interesting over the next few hours to follow what the police say, to see what local politicians say, but also to see how that local community react. But the message from police is, do not leave your house tonight, do not come down to this area, only come here if you're coming here to pay your respects. There is no reason to come here and cause even more trauma to local residents that have already been through so much. 
Oliver, thank you very much indeed. That's Oliver Whitfield-Mirchich reporting from Ely, where, as you know, insurrection broke out last night.